So let's go ahead and take a look at the other protection levels. I'll, I wanted to show you something else here. Let me load up the Visual Studio and I'm going to open up the solution, the Chapter 3. And notice that the last time when I closed this particular solution, the package that we had assigned a password to was previously open. And so when it reopens the solution, it tries to reopen this particular package. And in such, it's asking me to put in our password. Now again, if you do get to that point, you can hit cancel if you don't know what the password is. You just won't be able to see uh, execute the package without modifying the sensitive info. Uh, let me go ahead. I've got the properties in case you can't remember from last video how to get those. They're under view properties. And I need to make sure that I'm in the uh, that I have not selected anything. Notice that I can choose the data flow task. And if I choose the data flow task, then I don't get the security option under this uh, setting over here. So I need to make sure I'm at the package level. So there's somewhat of a hierarchy. Uh, if we go down into the data flow task over here, now we're in the source. You see that changed up here. So I need to make sure I'm in the control flow at the package level. And I go to the security section right here. Okay, so we talked about uh, what the encrypt sensitive was. And we said the user key is where it takes your username and uses that as assault uh, versus using a password and it uses the password as assault. Um, the don't save sensitive, we talked about that one in the last video as well. It just, it would not save passwords at all. You'd be able to run them here interactively in the debugger but you wouldn't be able to email this to a friend and have them run it if the package had things like a password in it. Now let's take a look at the other options down here, the encrypt all. This one's not too difficult to understand. This, the encrypt sensitive is just going to encrypt information like passwords. Everything else is going to just be in an XML format. If it encrypts all, it actually will encrypt the entire package in the XML file. So let's do uh, let's do this. Let's put in um, the SA password is. You know, we'll put that in there, and <laughs> let's say that that really is the SA password. And let's now save this package with encrypt all with user key. It's not going to ask me for the package password at this point. It's going to encrypt it using my username as the salt. And so now I close this out. Let's go open that under Documents, Visual Studio, Projects, Chapter 3, My Project, Video 5. When we take a look at that, and I'll open this with Notepad. If you don't have Notepad or TextPad like I do here, uh, choose your default program and just drill through over here. And This is uh, Windows uh, Vista, Windows 2008. That's what these screens look like. Um, and like you could use WordPad. I don't see, oh, Notepad's up there. I would use Notepad if I didn't have TextPad, uh, which is not a free. Uh, so go ahead and open it up, and you'll see right there, There's, it's just nothing but a big encrypted bunch of junk, right? So we can no longer see what we saw in the last video. If you remember when we said just save sensitive, it still writ, wrote in there that the user ID we were using was the SA. And that's probably not something that you want just in a text file somewhere. That's all this is, right? It's just a text file. It has a DTSX extension, but it's a text file. It's just a whole bunch of characters that are really uh, in the in XML format here. You can still see that it does adhere to XML, right? So it's a uh, an XML file here that is encrypted. You see the encrypted equal one, that being the Boolean. So it's telling it's encrypted here. Right? So if you put it in this save all, then things like usernames, uh, database names, file locations, everything is obfuscated. Nobody can see that information.
However, <laughs> you have to now, let me just make sure you understand. Let me open this back up. Um, documents can change. Yes, that's fine. I want to open the file. Um, now, I'm the only one that can open it. You see, we encrypted it with the user key. And so watch, uh, let's do this. I'm going to copy this to the root of the C. This may take us some time. I may actually have to flip between. Uh, let's go and add now a new user to the system. And then let's open this as that user. And I'll show you what we get here. So let's now say local users. We'll make a new user, call it um, Chrissy. And we'll give Chrissy a super secret password. No one could ever crack. And let's now go ahead and log off and be Chrissy now. Uh, so I'm going to go switch users. And let's switch over to Chrissy. Don't look at my password. And it's probably going to take a second for it to prepare that desktop the first time. But now let's open up the Visual Studio and see what sort of decryption we're able to get here. And actually, it's good that we have this Chrissy account because we'll use this a couple of other times, uh, particularly in the next video when we start talking uh, about, or, or two videos from now, when we talk about troubleshooting corrupt package errors. Uh, we'll say hello, thank you. And let's go ahead and launch the Visual Studio, which is probably going to take one of those, uh, you know, first time use uh, things here. So pretty blue background. We could change that, personalize that so that we have the nice little uh, learn it first background. You guys want to see that, right? I know you do. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I guess we'll stretch it better. There you go. Learn it first. So nice. And I despise this default desktop. I want my my computer files. I like stuff on my desktop, man. Quit taking it away from me. It took a little while to come up here, so sorry about that. Uh, and now I'm just going to go open that particular file. And we open that file. And uh-oh, corrupt. Oh no, the package is corrupt. Oh my gosh, what do we do? I don't know what to do. Okay, well this is what, two videos from now I'm going to show you. We're going to deal with this exact same scenario here. How to troubleshoot corrupt package errors and how to figure out what's actually going on. But really, we, we can't fix this. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Down here at the bottom, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Ah, and I did the wrong thing. I didn't mean to do that. Let me open it back up. Go open it again. And we get our message here. I, what I wanted to show you was down here at the bottom, the, yes, I still want to open it. I've, here's what I wanted to show you. Let me bring this up here to, so I can get to stout stay so that we can actually read it. Um, okay. Failed to remove package protection and failed to decrypt a package that is decrypted with a user key. Okay, we're not that user, therefore we can't decrypt that package. Now let's contrast this. Let me go ahead, I'm going to log off as Chrissy. I'll just switch back over as the all-powerful, <clears throat> the administrator, by the way, and go back in here. And I should have just a shortcut to that solution, but I don't. This time, I'm going to save that as encrypt sensitive. And you do get this. Uh, this document contains long lines of text. That's because it sees that encrypted value as a single string. You say, OK. And I go to the package level, and I change. Instead of encrypt all with user key, let's encrypt all with a password. And so now let's make our 
secure password save this same thing I did before make a copy of it so let me just go to it copy it to the C drive overwrite the file that's already there you'll see right here the file size is different uh, this was encrypting with the user key this is encrypting with the password not that that matters. Who cares about 50K to 100K? Uh, so I do want to replace it. Let's go back in as Chrissy. So I'm going to log back off as this and log in as Chrissy. Oops, sorry. Don't forget that super secret password. Open the Visual Studio and open the file. And now it's going to ask me for the package password, not the user key. And provided that I know what the password is, now I'm able to open it. And I would be able to execute this particular package. So that's that difference between user key and password. User key says I have to be this person to open it. Otherwise, the password, anybody can actually open that. Okay. Now, the final one that I want to show you, I'm going to have to log back in as Learn It First. So give me just a, a second here. And let me reload my thing. The final one we really can't talk about just yet. Um, I'm going to have to do the next video uh, to show you what that is. So we had put a password into the package five, video 5, so what I was asking. Uh, the final one here is server storage. Okay, this is not going to be one that's available to us from within the designer right here. Uh, this is one that's available from within the integration services server. So I'll tell you what, that's actually a good one to leave for the next video. So let's come back in the next video and talk about how to import and export SSIS packages and we'll talk about this server storage encryption option.